Welcome to Vancouver. Whoa! And I'm really excited to announce that we are now rolling out our first round of interoperability tests and requirements to define a common core that must be available in every OpenStack environment, private, public, or hybrid. And this is really creating an OpenStack-powered planet. One of the really cool features that was in Kilo and uh, that I'm really excited to get to show you this morning was around federated identity. Now, this is a feature that's been developed over, over a couple of releases, but it's one that shows the power of having an OpenStack-powered planet with a global footprint of clouds. In the Kilo release, we, I think the most interesting feature we delivered was, was around the Keystone Federation uh, features, because they complemented what they already did for the Juno cycle with uh, extra capabilities for, for uh, clouds to be able to interpret with one another. So you end up with, uh, uh, you will authenticate on one cloud and be able to burst capacity on another. And that's really key to our promise to deliver uh, interoperability between, between clouds, uh, between OpenStack clouds all over the world. We have three challenges, essentially. And so what we were able to do is actually boot up an OpenStack instance, running our applications on top of AWS for those purposes. So really just to prove the point of OpenStack interoperability for our business. One of the shows we did this year was this great show called Unreal. Shot in Vancouver, cut in Los Angeles, and all done on OpenStack. We really see that uh, OpenStack plays a part in the production of this all yep. the way through to, you know, watching it in your, in your home. You know, all of the applications that we, that we showed the last time around, like the weather app, um, runs on top of OpenStack today. Uh, there's a number of other challenging apps that we've moved over to the OpenStack infrastructure and it's really let us do things like uh, for the Super Bowl or for World Cup. You only have a few weeks from the moment when all of the people that are creative decide what they want to implement to when you actually have to have it ready for millions of users. And so in a period of about four weeks, we can create an app from scratch, get it running, and scale it up for millions of Comcast customers. People are very excited about containers and Docker, right? And for good reason, these, this is a very exciting technology. There are many technologies that are coming on the scene in containers. If you think about OpenStack, again, we, we're not a hypervisor, right? We integrate with hypervisors. That's exactly the same pattern that I see happening with containers. So what are you doing here? Uh, so we're here at OpenStack Summit uh, talking about Kubernetes. And basically, you know, we believe in this vision of, of Kubernetes running everywhere, whether it's public cloud or private cloud. And so we think, you know, from a private cloud perspective, OpenStack is definitely leading the charge on how to do that the right way. To deploy cloud across an enterprise of 80,000 people and 10,000 developers. So there's an awful lot of organizational and cultural change required. So now we're at the point where we're actually we're running this particular process in parallel to building out cloud and forcing cloud adoption across that enterprise. If you have doubts about OpenStack running in production, this is a proof point for you to say that OpenStack is doing transactions, financial transactions. If you go on the web, use any e-commerce provider, buy something, sell something, or go to ebay.com, buy something, sell something, and use PayPal as a payment provider, that transaction is now going through OpenStack. And in 2016, I'm really excited to announce that we're going to be going back to where it all began in Austin, Texas in April. After Austin, we're going to go back to Europe to Barcelona. So here's our OpenStack story. It's pretty simple. 
JPL needs an open and free technology that allows us to consolidate our underutilized infrastructure and make it easily available and provisionable by projects who no longer have the funding or resources available, while still preserving the capability for the missions that will need the infrastructure in the future. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the community for truly supporting our mission and, and ask that you continue to support OpenStack because it is doing a, a wealth of good for NASA. The thing that, that is really cool that we've seen here is, again, how OpenStack you know, is powering all of these different services and so many different things from uh, you know, beginning to end, behind the scenes, driving new use cases, enabling new content, and, uh, and really pushing the envelope on what people can do in different industries. Yeah.